Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Sigmax. Today we'll learn how to solve this specific kind of problem. The goal of this problem is to find the total energy stored in the circuit under a steady, steady state condition. So the steady state condition means that uh, means that the current at each point uh, in the circuit is constant and it does not change uh, with time. So that means uh, the whole circuit can be considered as DC circuit and we know that for the DC circuit for the DC circuit the capacitor acts like uh, acts like open circuit and the inductor acts like closed circuit and, and the open circuit is represented by uh, two lines and, and uh, the, which, which are separated like this and the closed circuit is just uh, represented by the continuous line. Uh, if, if you look at this figure, uh, this, this circuit diagram, you can see three components and they, they are inductor, capacitor and the resistor. And out of these three, only two of them uh, store the energy which are inductor and capacitor. That means if we want to find the total energy stored in the capacitor, uh, we, we need to find the energy stored in the inductor L1 and the energy stored in the capacitors C1 and C2 and add them. And uh, you, uh, as, as you know, the energy stored in, in the capacitor is given by half C which is the capacitance times the voltage square so V is the voltage across that capacitor and the energy stored in uh, the inductor is given by half uh, inductance times the current square now to solve this type of problem what you can do is you can use uh, the following fact of DC circuit where the capacitor is considered open and an inductor is considered closed and you can draw the equivalent diagram equivalent circuit diagram for this kind of uh, uh, problem so what you can do is for this one uh, draw a straight line and here you can see if this is node A you can just draw a straight line since the inductor is closed so this one will be B and then uh, from B there will be a resistance uh, which is uh, R1 equals to 4 ohm and this point here will be this point will be D and if you connect the other one it will be resistance R2 which is given by 2 ohm and this point will be C and mm, the rest is the rest of the circuit and you can see here from A to D there is capacitor but since it acts as open circuit we don't uh, we don't connect those uh, points and for B and C we also have another capacitor and it's also not connected now to find uh, to find the energy stored in the inductor which is represented by let's say u1 is equal to half times l which is the inductance and we know the inductance is given by 2 micro henry times the current square and as you can see here the current flows from this point to a node a and since uh, since the capacitor acts like uh, open circuit uh, the current doesn't flow on this direction so it doesn't flow in this direction so it just goes uh, straight and passes through the resistor and the next resistor so it's, it seems like it just uh, it, it's the series combination so the if, if I which is given by 2 ampere is the current flowing in into the circuit then the current through the inductor is also 2 ampere 
So if you plug in the value here, then you will find half uh, times 2 micro Henry times 2 MPA square, which is give equal to 4 micro joule. Similarly, to find the uh, energy stored in the capacitors C1 and C2, first we have to find the voltage across AD, which is capacitor C1, and the voltage across C2, which is voltage across BC. Now, if you uh, look at the figure here, then you can see that the potential across V, uh, potential across AD, which is represented by VAD, and let, let it be V1, uh, it will be equal to the potential across BD. So, potential across BD. And potential across BD is the current flowing through the resistance R1 times the resistance R1. So, it will be uh, 2 amperes times 4 uh, ohm and it will be equal to 8 volt. Similarly, uh, potential across BC, which is the uh, which is the potential across the uh, capacitor C2, is equal to VBC, which is uh, equal to I times the sum of the resistance. So it will be I times R1 plus R2, and this is equal to 2 amperes times the sum of the resistance, which is equal to 6 ohm. And this equals six. Uh, uh, this equals twelve volt. Now, the energy stored in the capacitor C1, which is which is let's say represented by U2, is equal to half C1 V1 square. And this is equal to half times the capacitance C1, which is two microfarad, times voltage V1 squared. And the voltage V1 is given, uh, we, we found that to be 8 volt. So if you square that and do this calculation, you'll get 64 micro joule. Similarly, the potential across uh, capacitor C2 is given by U3. And the formula will be half times C2 V2 square. And this if you plug in the value of C2, which is 2 microfarad, times the voltage V2, which is 12 volt square, you'll get 144 micro joule. Now, uh, to find the total energy stored in the circuit, what you need to do is just take the sum of all those energies you calculate calculated before so u1 plus u2 plus u3 and u1 is given by 4 microjoule plus u2 is given by 64 microjoule plus and u3 is given by 144 microjoule and the sum will give you 212 microjoule thus this is the total uh, energy is stored in the circuit given uh, given in this picture so this is how you can calculate the energy stored in the circuit so what you need to do is uh, find uh, what components you have in the circuit and then uh, if you have uh, capacitor inductor and uh, resistance what you need to do what you need to know is uh, only the inductor and capacitor store energy so you have to find the energy stored in those components and uh, at the end to find the total energy you have to add add the energies stored by them individually i hope you you learned something about uh, how to find the energy stored in the circuit like this and you can solve the problem which is given in the homework uh, easily thanks for watching